We are now officially in meteorological fall, and that means that the upcoming winter season is quickly approaching, one that could be completely different from recent years due to a specific type of climate pattern. This video is a first realistic approach to what you can expect with a look at temperatures, precipitation, and more with historic trends. Stick around for everything you need to know. I discussed in my recent fall weather forecast that a new climate pattern is on the way. That pattern is La Nina, driven by cooler than average East Pacific Ocean waters that tend to actually bring big changes to fall and winter in the USA. These changes can be seen in both temperature and precipitation. Here's a look at the average temperature trends for a La Nina winter. Notice that while most of the country is painted in average to above average conditions, big cool downs keep things chillier than average for the northern corridor many times. The jet stream flow tends to move in between these anomalous air masses, keeping the warmer and cooler sides of the typical setup separated. With the jet stream flow in mind, here is the average precipitation setup for winter La Ninas. The areas that tend to be warmer also tend to expect drier conditions from the southwest to the southeast corridor. Meanwhile, locations along and near the stronger average jet stream flow shown earlier have a better chance of above normal precipitation. The most notable and broad area for this is in the Midwest and Great Lakes, where lots of swings in temperatures could mean various winter storm modes in the pattern. How strong will this La Nina be by winter though? This graphic issued in August shows chances of La Nina, isoclimate neutral, or El Nino conditions through next spring. Notice how the months of August, September, and October labeled ASO actually have as equal a chance of neutral conditions as the new La Nina setting in. However, gradual changes indicate that by any month from around October to January, about a 70% chance for a full-on La Nina exists. This La Nina phase will probably be on the weaker side given the fact that neutral conditions are more likely once again by spring of 2025. The strength of a given La Nina pattern does matter in how USA patterns are affected. Let's look back to see how weak La Ninas tend to play out temperature and precipitation wise. You can see on this set of historical data dating from the 1950s to the early 2000s and weak La Ninas that variability is quite crazy in temperatures during these types of winters. Many years had a lot of cooler than average blues across the central and particularly north central regions. Meanwhile, some outliers had the warmest air in those exact same spots. The precipitation anomalies for those years were very similar, variable in where drier or wetter spots were and definitely not showing a major signal towards a typical La Nina by any means. Since those are just a mess in all honesty, I turn to two recent years to give you a look at how this winter could resemble them. The first recent winter is 2017 to 2018, where a weak in La Nina pattern took hold of the USA and led the Climate Prediction Center experts to make their outlook resemble the general La Nina setups I showed you earlier. The temperature projections actually did seem to follow the outlook nicely with warmest conditions further south and some cooler than average air for the north more than not. The precipitation anomaly was also similar to forecast, as you can see on screen. This certainly gives a little hope after seeing how variable those other years were compared to a stronger or more set-in La Nina. The next winter is actually just a couple years ago, 2022 to 2023. The Climate Prediction Center made similar overall forecasts to 2017 to 18 that agreed with climate trends, and results were not too far off, once again, for temperatures. Notice how these weak La Nina years, even in some of the variable graphics we looked at before, tend to have some area of the country get a bigger dose of that cooler than average air. In this case, it was the northwestern United States. The precipitation forecast was quite off for 2022 to 23, but that is a more variable and hard to predict element as a whole. Now that I've shown you how far off of average La Nina's weak phases can be in comparison to stronger events, let's look at what climate models are analyzing for this upcoming season's outlook. Before that, though, here's a quick reminder that I use awesome weather model maps from Weatherbell and many forecast videos. Check out their free trial link below to get a no-charge use of their product before getting a subscription. Speaking of subscriptions, you hitting the subscribe button would mean a lot to me right here on YouTube. If you want traditional 10 to 15 minute forecast videos with custom graphics plus seasonal outlooks, consider hitting that free button down below. Now back into the video to look at model projections for this winter. Zooming in on our first winter forecast model, you can see that this CANSIP seasonal guidance actually follows up with La Nina averages pretty nicely in its temperature outlook. Most spots in the southern United States are warmer than average, while areas further north have a better chance of being a lot more frigid, in some cases even more than normal. This guidance is pretty alone in showing any blues on the map, though. As other popular guidance, such as the CFS and even long-range European models, show nothing but oranges and reds slathering the country overall for the entire season. For precipitation trends, the models actually have some decent level of agreement, particularly with guidance such as the European and Canned Sips, indicating better chances of above-average moisture through the mid-Mississippi Valley, Midwest, and Great Lakes. Also notice how this guidance shows drier conditions in the typical La Nina corridor, even for weak ones, which includes the Southwest and Gulf Coast states. 
CFS model guidance does add even the southeast U.S. into its wettest quarter by late winter, something that could certainly occur if we reflect the overall active winter of storminess like 2022 to 2023 had. But before looking at my preliminary winter trend outlooks and what else could affect the forecast, here's a look at what the Climate Prediction Center has to say for this winter. Based on how the experts at the CPC normally do their outlooks, I don't find it much of a surprise that the current outlook at the time of this video basically shows typical La Nina trends for temperatures. This graphic definitely does even go against some of the models, however, as the Midwest and Ohio Valley even have equal chances of cooler or warmer air overall. Experts also represented La Nina in their seasonal precipitation outlook in general, and they also have included the Northeast U.S. in the above average precipitation category in addition to much of the general north. With past years, the variability of weak La Ninas, models, and the Climate Prediction Center's graphics in mind, here are my general trend outlooks for 2024 to 2025 temps and precip. My temperature outlook has two focal areas, the biggest being the warmer than average area anticipated for the southern U.S. Between most models and other guidance, states from California to Texas and Louisiana to the Carolinas appear like they'll come out of this winter trending warmer than average. Meanwhile, a more variable polar jet stream that is likely has me thinking that most northern states and even some central states will be near to below averages for temperatures by the time winter is done. This could even mean more snow in some of these locations. My winter precipitation trend outlook is indeed similar to general La Nina's and model guidance, and I think the precip zone is already appearing likely to go well above average into the Midwest and Great Lakes. This could mean increased snow for their north, but also some better chances for severe weather into states in the lower Ohio Valley and surrounding locations. It looks like the northwest U.S. will also trend wetter and or snowier depending on elevation, while the southwest has less atmospheric river events due to drier air. The closer you go to the Gulf Coast, the higher I think your chances for a below average rainfall this winter. While everything I've shown so far is a good starting point, nobody can really predict this winter perfectly without a high level of guesswork. I'm now going to show you why by diving into climate trends and teleconnections that can fully change winter while only being predicted within a week or two of occurring. One teleconnection is on screen now. This is the Arctic Oscillation or Impact of Arctic Air and Pressure on Mid-Latitudes. Zooming in on the positive phase, you can see this tends to cause cold and icy air across the northern zones of Canada and the Arctic, indicated by those blues on screen. Meanwhile, reds indicate above average ridging or high pressure across the U.S. during this phase. This can be connected to generally less cold air blasts and heavy snows. In fact, most of the USA tends to be above average temperature-wise during a positive Arctic oscillation, as my custom graphic points out. The exact opposite occurs during a negative phase, which brings high pressure to the Arctic and forces low pressures and possible snowstorms to the mid-latitudes. Notice how on my temperature graphic that a lot of the eastern US can be affected by longer periods of cold air during negative Arctic oscillation phases. What's also interesting about negative AO phases during La Nina can be seen now, with a data set proving that weaker in La Ninas tend to make any negative phase very intense with cold air for much of the U.S. Another oscillation affecting the U.S. is called the North Atlantic Oscillation, which involves pressure in the North Atlantic and Southeast Canada, as seen with some big anomalies in those areas on screen. Similarly to the Arctic Oscillation, positive phases tend to allow warmer air and generally ridging for most of the USA, including the eastern and central regions. On the contrary, negative phases tend to force longer periods of cooler Canadian air into the U.S. Other factors such as the Pacific North American pattern and Madden-Julian oscillation influence USA jet streams and temperature anomaly trends, and I'll include more info on them later and for now in description links. I also want to point out that the entire Earth's climate is in a changing phase at this time, and that can play a role in temperatures more than anything else sometimes. Take a look at this recent trend data from the Climate Prediction Center. This shows that when compared to the late 1900s, the early 2000s have seen winter temperatures on the uptick trend-wise for averages. The only area that has stayed closer to the 1900s temperature-wise, or even a bit below those averages, is the North Central Zone, which is intriguing given the fact that this area once again has a higher end chance of having yet another cool or average winter. That's everything I can really concisely cover for you in a trend outlook three months out, everyone, so I want to close out by showing you what I have on screen right now, which is the thumbnail I chose for this video. Explaining how it applies to the video that I just showed you, notice that most of the country is either in an orange or blue shade. The orange shade is where I've got those warmer than average temperatures being expected due to La Nina. The blue shade is where we've got cooler than average conditions expected. Then the pink area in between into the Midwest and Great Lakes, that is where more precipitation is expected and a lot more wild cards as a result. That being said, that is all I have in this video for this trend outlook for the winter of 2024 to 25. I will have another winter forecast sometime in October or early November more than likely, so I hope that you're looking forward to that on the channel. That video will definitely include more details on severe weather, where I expect the heaviest winter snowstorms, all of those kinds of details, so make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below if you want to catch that forecast when it comes out, as well as any regular weather forecast videos, because I'll definitely be posting plenty of those in between. Everybody have a blessed rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. one nation weather.